to be honest, unless I'm mistaken, Rude never said, you know, Ginny Lemon sachet away. So I assume I'm still in the competition. Hello, DJ, drag superstar, all round icon and humble human being, Jodie Harsh here. Welcome to Tea Time with Attitude Magazine, a weekly show where I spill the freshly brewed tea with the latest queen to be eliminated from RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Today, it's Ginny Lemon. Ah! Ginny Lemon in the house. Hiya, Babs, how you so, doing? I'm good, I'm good. That was mad last night. Mm. Was it what happened? Okay, you know what happened. We'll go, we'll go straight in. So what we <laughs> witnessed on the runway was <laughs> quite literally a moment of Drag Race Herstory. You made Herstory. In retrospect, is there any part <clears throat> of it that you regret? Absolutely not, no. I went into that show. I never went into that show as a competitor. I went into that show as an icon and I always stay true to my own artistic character. No matter what, I will push and pull no matter what yeah. people, if they ask that of me, but I always stay true to myself. And there was no part of me that was going to be competing against somebody that I'd just seen a blossoming friendship with. Regardless of rules and regulations, I thought, bugger this, I'm knackered, me feet hurt, I'm my foam. And to be honest, unless I'm mistaken, Rue's never said, you know, Ginny Lemon sachet away. So I assume I'm still in the competition. I, d I mean, I don't know. You could, you could still win. Who knows? My lips are sealed. <laughs> You're my season two winner. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you knew that you might be in the bottom two after the critiques. Did you plan to walk if you were in the bottom beforehand or was it like a spur of the moment decision when you were up on stage and the music started? Well, I kind of had a little inkling because I thought, you know, I'd done quite well in the challenge. I thought I looked quite nice on the runway with my nice yellow teeth to match my outfit. And that in the challenge, I'd done quite well. So it was the first time that I felt quite comfortable in a challenge and quite like, oh, I've got this. So it was the first time I didn't worry. And what I don't like is as an artist, having this pressure and artistic, um, it kind of, this pressure it fizzles in my head and it doesn't make everything come out right. So I thought, no, I'm not going to have this. I don't need this. Um, I don't need to feel this way about myself. I'd already displayed such a raw, vulnerable side of myself. I thought, no, I'm going to reclaim a bit of it because I don't, I don't want to do this. I'm knackered. So it was that very moment that I thought, well, if they're not buying what I'm selling, then I'm going to bugger off home and do a car boot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you tell any of the other queens about what you were thinking of doing? No, I was very, you know, for once in my life, I was lost for words. And um, I kept my mouth shut and I just had this uh, smug smile on my face. I thought, I know what I'm going to do. And just thought I'd make a bit of telly history, darling. You know, as icons, we can't help ourselves. So what was going on backstage when you uh, went for walkies? Did anyone like, try and persuade you to stay or return to the stage? Well, it was so funny because I walked off and then we, um, obviously there's loads of people on the set running around and this absolute deer backstage grabs my arm and goes, Ginny, what are you doing? And apparently my only response was, I'm making telly, darling. And then I couldn't stop laughing. I honestly, it was like the funniest thing. I'd made myself laugh so much that one of the people even went with this lovely, like, um, sort of Southern accent, was like, you're laughing like a mad woman. And I thought, I couldn't, and because I forgot how I looked, because you forget that you're all trussed up like a pig in a wig. And I looked like this demented witch with yellow teeth cackling away on my broom. So I, then when I realised that, when I caught myself in the mirror, I couldn't stop laughing. So I, I was delirious because I'd, I'd made myself laugh because I knew everyone would be outraged. There were reports in the press as well before the series aired that you'd had a few more um, choice words to say to Rue than were actually shown in the episode. Is there any truth in that? Because I, I heard that you told the panel to F off. Well, don't read everything you believe in the gutter press, darling. And also, I mean, you saw the edit. Did I flip off through? I mean, just have a little look. Have you Do your own investigations. I can't reveal what happened that went on backstage. Uh, mm. But, you know, who knows? You make, make up your own mind, but uh, don't read everything you believe in the press, darling. <laughs> <laughs> do you think I'm the sort of person that would flip off route. I mean, come no. on, oh. as, much, 
as much as you know you could have feelings yeah. at the time rupaul is an icon and from one icon to another there is nothing but respect you know speaking of another icon as well michelle said that she felt she'd seen it all from you so what did you think about that do you think do you think you have plenty more to show still i think she needs a new prescription we'll leave it at that <laughs> Have you seen or spoken to any of the judges since that moment? Well, you know, me and Michelle had a sleepover last night and we were just, we had sweet and salty popcorn that we'd made in the microwave. And she was yeah. cracking me toes and she said to me, Jenny, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're everything. We, you had to go, the sexual tension between you and Rue smelt like a burnt cheese toasty. You just had to go. <laughs> So, you know, we'd like to keep that away from the, you know, the fact that we've had a sort of open relationship before the three of us, but um, it's all very mutual in the end. I was very feeling very sub that day. So I just had to do anything I was told. Yeah. You said you walked because you didn't want to lip sync against your sister, sister, sister. Was there also yeah. an element of wanting to take back some control of the situation? Yes, of course, of course. Like, we are all in control of our own destiny. If, well, we're not all in control of our own destiny, but we can be. If we're put into certain positions, we can control that. And I thought, do you know what? I've been really emotional. Um, you haven't been, you just don't get it. So I thought, why? Why linger on into something where I see girls that are there to win RuPaul's Drag Race? They want to win that title and I'm not going to stand in anyone's dream. It was kind of, I kind of got over myself, you know, in that moment I was like, do you know what, Ginny, like, just shut up, like, <laughs> go home. Like, in, in a nice way, I'd had a lovely time, but it was like, go home and yeah. let these girls who really want this strive in the competition. And I thought, you know what, I'm just kind of like, I just kind of went in there, broke the binary, wanted to fuck things up. That's what I wanted to do. So I'll do my yeah. thing and I'm not going to stand in the way of somebody who genuinely wants to win a competition. And I'm not about so competitions. I mean, put, pitting queer people against each other is not my thing, but... No. So when Alan inquired about your shoes, you opened up about your medical diagnosis as well. Um, how has that impacted you? Did it affect your ability to compete, to compete on the show at all? Oh God, honestly, before, the funny thing is, is I found out I was on Drag Race around about the, the time that, that we were having these these tests done at the, at the doctors and, and going right. through this process. I've had, um, you know, problems for a good few years now and it was, and I just didn't know what it was. And it all kind of came to a head around about the same time. So I went into the competition without even thinking about it. I just got the diagnosis and I just didn't think about it. I put it out of my mind and I thought, no, this isn't going to affect me. I'm not going to let this affect me one bit. So I just kind of <clears throat> did it until I couldn't do it anymore. And it came to a point and they, you know, ev every week there was a, a comment or something about my shoes and I'm known for wearing flat shoes. I don't, I don't give a shit what people say. You can do drag wearing whatever you want. I hope you've got slippers on because I can only see the top of you. You know, you know, we have got any shoes on. <laughs> Good, get those Crocs on. And I'm like, you know, if you're just gonna say about my shoes, I'm just gonna be honest with you and be like, do you know what, babes? I've got fibromyalgia, so I can't be doing full throttle madness as well as wearing big stupid shoes. Like you either get one or the other. <laughs> so um, for me, it's all about the inter entertainment value. And also like, I love a flat shoe. It's dead comfy. <laughs> Totally. We saw Rue encourage you to embrace like, yes. a, a sexy Ginny Lemon last week. So is is sexy Ginny Lemon here to stay or well, you know, she I come think and gone? I've never seen, when I talked about that, I've never seen Ginny as sexy. I mean, when it comes to myself, I've, I mean, I've had a year in lockdown and I've got two partners. I mean, I, I've, not, I've not been lost for feeling sexy, if you know what I mean. So... You know, this year has very much helped me connect with that sexy side. It was just, I felt uncomfortable bringing a uh, gendered side um, and introducing like anything that would be particularly gendered into my character. Mm. And I think that yes, I am sexy, but I don't need hips and tits to prove that I am sexy. But also I'm in a drag competition and I wanted to do drag for a little bit. You know, I thought I might as well try it for the first time while I'm there. <laughs> Yeah, we also heard you and Bimini um, discussing being non-binary. So 
Forget the rest of society, do you think there are still yeah. too many gay men who are dismissive of non-binary identities? Well, it's hard to... I wouldn't say it was particularly one minority um, of, of people, so I can't, like, pinpoint gay men. I would just say society as a whole needs changing, so it's hard just to say... I think it's hard because maybe when one has fought for something for so long with, with gay rights, when you get comfortable and you've started to achieve the things for yourself, maybe you're a bit more comfortable and you don't feel the need to fight anymore. But there are, people need to understand that, you know, the position that they were in, people are still in now. So the, the prejudice, the, the laws, all of those things are the fights that the non-binary and trans community are going through now. So, you know, get up off your asses, yeah. stop wearing your wide man spread jeans that you've become comfortable in and stop listening to Liza Minnelli or Barbara Streisand and start fighting, you know? So I'm so glad that that conversation yeah. happened, no matter how raw it was for me, yeah. just to get everybody listening. And I think at the time it was one human talking to another human and that's just what it was. And what kind of response have you had? Have, have fans perhaps struggling with their identities got in touch with you? It's been, it's been overwhelming. It's been absolutely incredible hearing as I said, like I'm not used to being so raw and, and showing such emotion. So to share that, I had to put aside how I felt for a moment and consider the bigger picture and go, this isn't about me. This is about a lot of people that are struggling as well. And we can all seek solidarity in knowing that we're all struggling sometimes. And I think lockdown has been a perfect example of that. But to have that conversation about gender I think has been, the, the response has been overwhelming. I, I'm not, I don't know how to process it or deal with it because I'm not, I wasn't expecting it. So I'm taking it and trying to now use that voice. I think if people are looking to me, I never set out to be a voice. I just went out to be a clown. So if I've got that voice, then I'll, I'll use it because we, we all need to fight. You, um, you auditioned for The X Factor, didn't you? In uh, 2017, in glorious Ginny Lemon, <laughs> drag will we be seeing more of you on telly I'd, lo I'd love to see you on the great british bake-off oh god could you imagine could you imagine i could i could yes. barely, i could make um i can make a good fish finger sandwich but i'm a veggie now so i can't even eat that um uh, oh well absolutely i'd love to do it like i really feel quite at home and quite fun in front of the cameras i feel like it's brought outside of me i'm so used to being a stage and cabaret performer so yeah, I did, I've done like, I've dipped my toe into reality TV before. <laughs> what was your Snatch game gonna be? Oh, me Snatch, everyone's talking about me Snatch. Well, I wanted to stay very true to my fans and I'm I'm very well known for having a song um, called Scylla Black. So um, I would definitely, definitely be Scylla Black. I mean, there was no, other, the, my only other option was Mona Lisa. Um, because she doesn't really say much, she just smiles, which I thought was good. So I could just do this. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time. Which queen did you bond with most the whole time. on the show? Um, well, that's, again, a difficult one. I was very close to um, Joe and Astina and Bimini before I went into the competition. There were three, 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 three. There's my Worcestershire R's coming. Um, there were three close, close friends, so it was difficult watching that journey, especially what happened for them. Um, but the person I connected with the most during my time there was definitely Sister. Um, we, she was the other Fruit Loop and we bonded over that, I think. Was there anyone that you perhaps didn't see eye to eye with? Um, not necessarily eye to eye, but I just think sometimes we were just on different wavelengths, you know? There was just like, everyone's energy was coming and sometimes the energy would connect and sometimes it was just kind of like, Kind of boying a little bit, but I, to be honest, I kind of got on with everyone. <laughs> so even if I wouldn't, yes, yeah, croissant, 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 oh, oh croissant, croissant. Was the buttery one? It's croissant. Is it buttered? Yeah. Is it buttered? Where's yeah. it gone? Yeah. Where am I sat on it? Croissant. Thank you, Stalin. Thank you. <laughs> Breakfast, that was. That was breakfast being served. Perfect, it's a bit late for breakfast, Thank isn't you. it? Thank <laughs> you. Um, I will leave you with one final question. 
What did you learn about yourself and your drag? What did I learn about myself? I think, oh, that's a good question. It's the first time anyone asked, has asked me this. Um, I've learned maybe just to like, not be in character as much, <laughs> you know, like just to like calm down a touch. I think, cause I think maybe I was just like, tr I was trying to make, I was trying to impress everyone. I think I was just trying to, I had this, this desperate desire to be loved. And I think, well, maybe now I've received that sort of public out, you know, that's the love that, I don't know. So maybe I could just chill out a little yeah. bit and be like, okay, I don't need to make everyone love me. I can just have a nice time. Just be you. And honestly, I've seen so much outpouring of love for you. And um, I feel like we haven't seen the last of you. Hopefully we're gonna see tons more. Oh, absolutely not. Because you know what this year needs is Ginny Lemon's tonic. So please listen to my brand new single, I'm So Offended. <laughs> which, I, which I absolutely <laughs> love. I left a comment on your Instagram last night. That's a sick beat. Reply, I'll reply, I blue pick, I'll reply. <laughs> yes. Absolutely, yes, exactly. Thanks so much for chatting to us today. Oh, thank you, Gorge. It's been an absolute blast. Thanks for watching Tea Time, served to you by Attitude Magazine. Tune in next week for more freshly brewed tea with Muggins here, as I'm joined by the latest queen to be eliminated from RuPaul's Strike Race UK. See you then. To watch more exclusive LGBTQ content, hit subscribe on Attitude's YouTube channel. And don't forget to like.